I have created this video to present architectural and deployment overview of the application which is developed by me for file storage and management web based solution. The application is three tier web application and it's hosted on Amazon Web Service Cloud Platform. It is designed and developed keeping security, high availability and auto scalability in mind. The front end of application is developed in React.js and back end APIs are developed in Node.js. Let's start with quick overview of application architecture and AWS resources which are created to deploy this application on AWS Cloud Platform. Let me explain a bit on this architecture diagram first. The diagram shows the application is deployed into two regions to handle disaster recovery scenario. For any reason, if one AWS region goes down, application can still serve from the secondary region in order to serve the disaster recovery scenario. Upper part of the diagram represent primary region and the lower part of the diagram represents secondary region. The entire application is deployed in AWS virtual private network per region. The VPC network is further divided into public and private subnet for each availability zone. Let's look at resources which are created in AWS for VPC and subnet. This is public VPC and another one is private VPC. Uh, both the VPCs are shared uh, and uh, VPC peering connection has been stabilized between these two VPC. Also there are subnet under this VPC. Uh, The application user interface service and backend service is hosted on EC2 instances. There are two elastic load balancer used. User interacts with application using a web URL resolved by route 53 C name record pointing to first elastic load balancer. This elastic load balancer points to user interface service. And the second load balancer point to backend service, which is file management service shown in this diagram. This is also uh, backed by ELB and uh, for second ELB as well, a route 53 record entry has been created. Let's see how Route 53 record entry looks like an ELB in AWS.
so these are two elbs which are created one is for backend service api and another is for ui service uh, for to serve the ui service let's look at route 50 route 50 records which has been created for these two elbs so i have bought my own domain which is file store dot store and I have created a hosted zone under this domain and file store dot store is pointing to elastic load balancer of UI and API dot file store dot store is pointing to elastic load balancer of backend API service. To make the application highly available and scalable, I am using auto scaling groups so that EC2 instances can scale up and scale down based on their CPU utilization. The auto scaling group metric collection has been enabled to view the CloudWatch metrics for auto scaling groups and instances using the Amazon EC2 console. Let's look at auto scaling group which has been created. So two auto scaling group has been created. One is for backend instances and another is for UI instances. An auto scaling launch configuration setting has been done to keep the desired and minimum number of instances as two and maximum number of instances as four. Here auto scaling group metric collection has been enabled for auto scaling group. The entire application is hosted on HTTPS for secure communication. Also the extra le level of security is given by sign up and login backend service. The sign up and login backend service uses AWS Cognito. For user identity management, as you can see in the instances are running in two availability zone. The backend service which is file management service here also exposes APIs for file upload, download, update and delete operations. This backend service communicates with CloudFront which is backed by a source as S3 bucket. CloudFront also uses custom SSL certificate to interact security with backend service. Another Route 50 record is created which points to CloudFront endpoint. Let's look at EC2 instances which are running and CloudFront and S3 bucket which are created in the account. As you can see, there are two user interface instances and two backend ins in instances. Also, CloudFront has been configured with source as S3 bucket. Let's look at S3 bucket. So this is primary S3 bucket 
which is fs management hyphen bucket and the which is in uh, uh, us east one region and the secondary bucket which is replication s3 bucket is created in us west region and these two buckets are con continuously getting things with replication uh, rules uh, every object which is uh, available as part of primary s3 bucket is being synced with replication s3 bucket so that if any reason for any reason one reason goes down the content can be recovered from another s3 bucket files are stored into s3 bucket under the s under the S3 bucket, a unique username directory is created to store all the files object for a given user. Also, S3 lifecycle rules has been configured. Which you can see that after 75 days, objects are transitions from standard s3 bucket s standard s3 storage type to standard io state storage type and after 365 days objects are transitions from standard ia to standard to glacier storage type Also, objects are expired after 730 days, which is two years, and they are permanently deleted after 730 days. The file metadata like file description, file creation, or update date is stored in DynamoDB table. In this table, file ID is the primary partition key and file name is primary sort key. Let's do, look at Diamond, DynamoDB resource. This is DynamoDB table which is created to store file metadata. Also, an admin of an application can see files of all the users and can perform delete update operation on the existing file. To achieve this, uh, we have used admin group which is created in Cognito user pool. Any user who is part of admin group in Cognito can perform elevated operations on file. That's it for the architectural overview for the application. In my next video, I'm going to demo the application functionality and show how sign in, sign out of user works and how user can perform various operations like file upload, download, update and delete using the web-based solution. Thank you for watching the video.